everybody, this is Andrew from Tia's for Tech. And in today's video, I have another mini PC to take a look at. This one from a company called Geekom, or Geekom, uh, G-E-E-K-O-M. Now this is the first time I've opened or taken a look at a uh, mini PC from this company. This is their Mini IT12. Obviously it's a mini PC. This does feature the Intel Core series of chips, so it can be a Core i3, i5, or i7. This one has a Core i5 12450H, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. So as with other mini PC reviews I've done on the channel, I am just gonna do an unboxing here, take a look at the specs, and then do a separate part of the video uh, that will be towards the end of this, where I will uh, do some speed tests, benchmarking, all of that stuff, and give you some of my feedback on how it performs. So we'll go ahead and start to open this up. We love, we pursue. I don't know if that's their tagline or what, I'm assuming. Here is the mini PC. You do have a thank you card in here. Uh, Geek, Geekum was founded in 2003. Some information around, uh, you know, thanking you for purchasing the product. And then in the bottom here, there are some screws. It's an HDMI cable. A uh, power cord that plugs into this power adapter which is a pretty hefty duty power adapter. This looks like it is 120 watt power adapter, pretty beefy. Get a user manual, kind of goes over how do you remove the top, um, those sorts of things, how do you mount it it's using this face amount to the back of a monitor if you want to do that. This does have two DDR4 uh, memory slots, so it is dual channel, it's not single channel, which is nice in case you want to do some upgrading. Uh, this also does allow you to add a SSD, so if you do want to add a hard drive, an additional storage drive to this, you can do that uh, via kind of a SATA connection, internal. But yeah, so you get the little user guide there screws for stuff um, and all of that. So I'm going to move that off to the side and go ahead and open this up. Now this is a pretty pretty hefty device. I mean it's not super lightweight. It feels like it's well built. Um, the bottom of this is metal. Got some feet that are secured by screws. So the outside, this blue part is plastic but it feels like you know the frame inside is made out of metal uh, and that sort of thing. You know, side vents here. It's kind of like a perforated metal for uh, airflow. On the front here, you do have some USB connections. You've got a headphone connection, headphone microphone maybe, power button. The top has the logo. Side, this side has a Kensington lock hole. Like I said, kind of like a metal grate. This side has an SD card slot. And then on the back you have power connection, HDMI, two HDMIs, two USB-C connections, which I think also work for display. You've got a ethernet jack and a couple more USB connections. So like I said, this one has the 12th gen Intel Core i5 uh, that does have 8 cores and 12 threads, 12 megabytes of cache, and the burst speed up to 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, the GPU is Intel UHD graphics. This has Windows 11 Pro loaded onto it. Uh, this one has 16 gigs, like I said, but it's expandable up to 64 gigs, so you can use two 32 gig uh, DIMMs in there. Uh, the internal storage, like I said, is, um, uh, oh, I didn't say, I guess, it's an M2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 slot, which can handle up to uh, two terabytes of a hard drive and a SATA hard drive slot up to two terabytes. Connection for a two and a half inch hard drive, which is nice. Uh, this has Intel Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. 
weighs 1.43 pounds. Uh, for interfaces, it has three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. It has one USB 2 port, two USB 4 ports, SD card reader, uh, the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, uh, 2.5 gigabyte uh, LAN port, two HDMI 2 ports, the DC jack power button, so yeah, this thing is pretty loaded with um, specs and all of that. So you can pull the top off and, and basically see uh, not much. There's the, the fan there and the exhaust or the, if it spins and pulls air in here and exhausts it out there probably. But that's what's under the top and that just kind of pulls off if you do that. I'm gonna get some a screwdriver and take the bottom off. That is a Kingston SSD, which is nice, so name brand there. I can't tell uh, if the RAM is name brand or not. Uh, looks to be Lexar memory. So this are two eight gigabyte Lexar DIMMs. And then the other part here is where you can put the uh, two and a half inch SSD, right? So slides in there, um, clamps in, and you are good to go for adding some storage. It has a pretty long ribbon cable there, so it shouldn't have any issues uh, taking this off and adding the additional storage if you'd like. So that's nice. These screws don't fully come out. They just kind of unscrew and then they're retained within the frame. Yeah, so basically that's it. Um, so it looks to be pretty uh, easily upgradable. You can, get at, you can access the SSD that's installed, uh, the memory locations, as well as additional two and a half inch SSD slot or bay. So pretty cool overall. Seems well made and I like the color. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and plug this in, set up my standard benchmarking software, and do some recording and testing, and then we'll hop on over to the computer and take a look at uh, what I find out. So let's hop on over there. So the first test I ran was the Crystal Disk Mark test, and this is sped up like 600%, so you can just see kind of what the results are. And I could not be happier with the results of this, right? So the M2 SSD with the PCIe uh, interface is uh, super fast for reading, writing, all of that. So very, very happy with the performance of the internal SSD. Two tests I ran were the Geekbench tests, right? So the Geekbench CPU test, as well as the Geekbench GPU test. And the results of that, after I ran it, I'll, it should show up here in a second. So you got a 2263 single core, 8618 multi-core, which is pretty good. I mean, I think this is very similar to another i5, uh, core i5 laptop that I reviewed recently right so since these are laptop chips in these mini pcs this kind of ticks and ties with the performance i saw with that other chip so i think this uh, is a very good performance overall in the i3 to i7 range this is right in the middle there and then with the opencl score on the gpu test this comes in at 8574 which again i mean is not super super high and you know it's not a meant to be a gaming PC at all. But if you do anything with light gaming, kind of uh, 2D, some light 3D graphics, I don't think you'll have an issue with this at all, right, in this kind of category of PC. And the last thing I did from a benchmarking perspective, I did run this performance test on the, on the machine, which goes through, uh, you know, the CPU, 2D, 3D memory disk, and the results are pretty good also here. So the CPU mark was pretty high, 73rd percentile, the 17301. 2D graphics kind of in the 37th percentile. 
memory, 61st, uh, 73rd for disk, right? So the disk is pretty, pretty quick. Now, the one thing, for whatever reason, the 3D graphics mark did not run correctly. And I tried this twice on this machine and it just didn't finish. So I'm really not sure why that is uh, for this specific machine. I couldn't figure out why it would not complete. It did run, like I could see it execute through the actual 3D graphics and all of that, but then it would not show a result, which is the first time that's happened to me in any of these mini PC reviews. So I'll have to do a little more digging to see why perhaps that was the case. Now here I was just running a streaming test over Wi-Fi just to see if it had any issues streaming. And I was just streaming one of my other videos on YouTube so I didn't get a copyright strike. And you know, no issues with buffering or anything like that. The streaming worked perfectly fine. Even when I was doing the screen recording at the same time, I didn't have any stuttering or anything like that. So from a media consumption standpoint, I think this one seems pretty decent uh, overall. MX speed silver switches in it. And here I was just recording the task manager screen while I was running uh, multiple videos streaming in the background. So this is using Netflix and two uh, tabs of YouTube video uh, just to see what how this would perform or if there was any issues there. And I didn't have any issues, right? So CPU is not doing too terrible. Memory is all right. And the disk is just kind of chugging along. You can see the Wi-Fi kind of bouncing around. But overall, it didn't really have any issues streaming multiple things at a time. Now, the last thing I did here, I just uh, used PowerPoint and Word and just kind of opened them up, you know, clicked, created a PowerPoint slide deck and just kind of tabbed through that just to show, you know, that it's very responsive for like office type tasks. You know, this type of computer would be perfectly fine for doing productivity tasks, web browsing, streaming, media consumption, potentially using it as a media center PC as well, right? Like that sort of, uh, you know, those sorts of use cases I think are, are great for this PC. Now, it's probably not going to handle, you know, like gaming and it's not meant to be a gaming machine or anything like that, more of a productivity sort of device, but it probably can run you know, some light games based on the PCU benchmarks and things like that that I that I did earlier. But overall, you know, works as you would expect. So overall, this seems to be a solid device, a solid mini PC, you know, compares well with other PCs that I've reviewed in the past and I've liked. And it just, uh, you know, impressed me at how smooth and everything was when I was testing it out. No issues at all, connected to my network, went through the Windows setup really quickly. Everything was working flawlessly. I also like the fact that it has plenty of ports on it. It's got the SD card slot. It's got, you know, front-facing USBs. It's got a bunch of USBs on the back. It can support multiple monitors, all of that. Really, really uh, a lot of features in a compact package. Right now, this is running for $386 on the Geek OM website. So I don't know if they're going to have any other sales. It is on sale right now. So if you want to check it out, please do. I will link to this in the description. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those below. I'll be sure to answer. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.